What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another review for you guys today. We're going to be talking about Burnley nil, Chelsea 3. Chelsea's four clean sheets in a row. Five clean sheets kept in our last six games. And the 4-3-3 looks to be producing magic. This was the most comfortable performance that we've seen in a while. We're going to delve into this in this video. I will be real, it is Burnley, and Burnley are Burnley, but they are a very tough team to break down. And before I start this video, I do want to just say the disclaimer. I don't think we would have broken this team down a month ago, let alone if you want to look back to last season or further than that. And this game was about progression. Chelsea broke down Burnley, and they persisted throughout the entire match. And I know if we played this game a couple of games ago, if we played with a 4 2 3 1 formation, this game would have probably been a 1 0. Guys, before I start this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G if you haven't done so already, and help me get just that little bit closer to 20k. Don't forget to press the bell notification button as well if you're feeling generous and want to hit that hat trick. And yeah, let's go straight into this review. Now Frank Lampard must have enjoyed the last 15 minutes that crashed our game the same way we all did because he started with the 4-3-3 that everyone was calling out and begging for. We went for Thiago Silva returning back to the lineup after missing the game due to other issues. Uh, the three in midfield as well of Kante, Havertz and Mount that we are going to delve deeper into in this video as well because they were excellent together. And the three, in, and the three up front of Ziyech, Abraham and Pulisic. Pulisic eventually had to come off with an injury in training. Apparently it wasn't anything too bad. It was just a little slip in training and they wanted to take him off as a precaution. But we played with Timo Werner on the left instead. And we knew that, Bur that Burnley were a team that we should be beating and that we can beat in the case of 90 minutes. But it was a case of how long would it take for us to break them down and how badly would they frustrate us. We know exactly the type of team we're facing when it's Burnley. They're going to put everyone behind the ball. They're going to have a lot of tall, very physical defenders and it's going to be very hard to try and get the ball into the box. And we spent the first half trying. There was a lot of good balls in. I mean, Rhys James, he had an amazing performance. I still think he'll be very frustrated over the fact that he couldn't get an assist but it's not because of him it being his fault or him being any of the Chelsea players fault the one thing you can never fault about Burnley is defensive stability they are disciplined they will stick to their shape and they will never move from it and it's about breaking them down and we need the moment of magic so obviously who stepped up the Moroccan magician himself Hakim Ziyech his second start in the Premier is no his second start for Chelsea and he added his second goal to Chelsea as well to make it and it was perfect and he, he looked so excellent I can't believe we were hearing Willian and Ziyech comparisons over the summer Be all because Willian can track back like Hakim Ziyech can't track back himself all we needed was someone who was 10 times better offensively and didn't have brain farts as soon as they got to the attacking third. And I'm not going to lie, Hakim Ziyech is giving me them early one matter or Eden Hazard vibes because he's just linking up the attack so perfectly. His range of vision, his passing is excellent. The guy tracks back and gets involved with the defensive work too. He's not afraid to have a long shot. And also, by the way, the guy's just so saucy. Him and Kai Havertz as well. The way they move on the ball, they move like they're three seconds ahead of everyone else. And yeah, it was an amazing goal for him. It was a powerful shot into the, into the goalkeeper's near post. I'm not sure if he was kind of reading that. I feel like he was probably expecting it to go to the far post. But yeah, that's just hacking CH4. You just banged into the net and it was 1 0. And I'm not going to lie, the first half was still continuing to frustrate. Burnley had a very good defensive shape and it was very hard to break down. Timo Werner was making a lot of runs that weren't really being found. And because of that, he had to drop deep a little bit more and try and help him with the link up play, which is still a great part of his game. It's a very underrated aspect of his game as well. Tammy Abraham, he was getting involved in the link up play as well he got the assist for Hakim Ziyech's goal and it was hard for us to try and break them down but we were dominating the midfield battle and it was because of that midfield free of Kai Havertz and Golo Kante and Mason Mount the perfect mix of defensive intelligence intensity ball progression and final third ability as well Havertz like I already said this guy plays the game like he's three seconds ahead of everybody else and he showcased how versatile he is as well. I've already said Kai Havertz can play anywhere in that center of midfield. He can play as a number six if you wanted to. He has the defensive awareness to do that. He can play as a ball progressor. We already saw that in the Cressida game. 
He can even have amazing games in a number 10 role, just in behind Kai Havers. But he just excels in that midfield three. And Golo Kante as well, he looked at, he looked like he was back to his best. I'm gonna aggress I am gonna address the fact that he played as a lone DM because I know you man are gonna hit me in the comment section and say, oh you're a hypocrite. You said N'Golo Kante can't play as a lone DM. I never said that. I said he's a ball progressor by nature. He likes carrying the ball. He played at his best in title winning sides as a ball progressor. I will also say the game did favour him as a lone DM. Burnley have nowhere near as an aggressive press as half of the other teams in the Premier League do. But N'Golo Kante has an excellent game. I'm not hearing any other, I'm not hearing any slander, I'm just expressing my point. But N'Golo Kante had an excellent game and he carried the entire midfield, snuffed out any of those Burnley attacks or any of those Burnley transitions from defence to attack. And I can't lie, if you're Chris Wood, you must be so annoyed trying to turn facing goal you see N'Golo Kante facing in front of you. And then Burnley, you could, they tried putting in in crosses and corners as well and had a little bit of Kepa PTSD at the start because I was sitting there thinking oh no we're probably going to end up conceding because it's a corner but you have to remember it's Edward Mendy in goal and this guy with his fucking giraffe arms can catch anything and honestly the first corner as well when he caught it was like okay cool we can relax having Kurt Zuma, Thiago Silva, two, two defenders who by the way dominated their aerial battles all throughout the game, which we're going to talk about a bit more in player rating. Excellent performances all around, which meant you can't try crosses against us anymore. Do you know how many years I used to dread crosses, dread corners, because you just know some bullshit would happen or we produce some fuckery and concede. Not anymore. We have balance. We have composure. I don't care if it's Burnley, because I know if this game was played a month ago, it would have been a different result. But it was an amazing performance from us all around. Second half came round. We were still dominating the midfield, but Burnley came round with a higher intensity and they started creating more chances. So we were feeling a little bit worried. We thought, oh, they might end up getting a goal here. We do need to get the second goal to kill it off. And what happened? Off a corner, we scored again, and Kurt Zuma has another goal to his tally. Guys, do you know how mad it is saying that we're good defending corners and we're good attacking corners as well? Imagine telling yourself this three months ago that this is the Chelsea side. Bro, all you Lampard out guys, it was all about patience with him. It was fine to criticise Lampard. I mean, I was I criticised him as well over the last few games. Some of the game management stuff didn't make sense. Everything I've seen from the last game and a half has been excellent and has been played to perfection. Frank Lampard noticed the 4 3 3 working and he stuck with it. I'm hoping this is the formation that we stick with for the next few games as well. And please, just don't change that midfield. I'm begging you. Kovacic is great and everything, but he started the season off poorly and he can't justify his position in the team right now. But 2-0, game was comfortable, the game looked done. And then Reese James off another interception off the right-hand side, set up Ziyech, who set up Timo Werner, who was having a very frustrating game, so it's very good to see him get that third goal as well. That's, I think, his third Premier League goal this season as well, so that's very good for him, and hopefully he continues to build on that tally. And other than that, by that point, Burnley were just playing for damage limitation. We had a couple of extra chances, but I feel like Frank Lampard was also trying to slow the team down as well. We got the game won at that point. We focused on the game at Rennes instead. We're going to go on to the player ratings. This is probably going to be the most positive player ratings I've done here in a while. We're going to start with Edouard Mendy in goal. What a presence. And like I already said, don't even bother with crosses when you got this guy in goal. And Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva next to him as well. No point. Edouard Mendy gets a seven. Didn't have much to deal with in terms of shots from, from the Burnley side. But he was still composed as always. And we didn't have any brain farts like you usually see from other goalkeepers wearing our shirt. Right back, Reese James, 86% pass rate, seven successful crosses, four duels won, eight long balls, eight recoveries, absolutely commanded that right hand side. And it was great to see him do that as well because he hasn't been playing in the first team over the last few games. So he didn't need to slowly get back into his position. Nah, straight on it, straight on them all games. Another game where I feel like he really deserved an assist, but now it's not really because other players let him down. It's because of how good Burnley's defensive shape is and how many players they just jam into that box. It's impossible to take a cross into Burnley's box as much as it is with ours as well. Because Burnley just have too many players, someone always just sticks a leg in it. But it was a great performance from him regardless. Thiago Silva dominated the air, dominated the entire Burnley game. 
Again, Chris Wood had this massively frustrating game having to deal with him and Kurt Zuma. And I'm going to keep talking about aerial ability because that's how much is how much is needed in this sort of game. Every time you've seen that Burnley game, you see the ball just pinballing around in the air. You need good players that can win it and bring it down to the ground. And that's Thiago Silva and that's Kurt Zuma. 90% duels won, 80 83% aerial duels won, 93% pass accuracy. Another amazing performance and none of you rival fans can tell me who's washed anymore. Seven for him. Kurt Zuma, I'm going to give him a seven as well. He's a bit shaky on the ball, but as dominant aerially as you expected from him. And you also got the second goal as well, which adds him up a little bit. So I'm going to give him a seven too. Ben Chilwell, he's also getting a seven. He was just as dominant offensively down the left-hand side and just as frustrated as well by Burnley's defence. But he was very good going forward, so I'm going to give him a seven. And Golo Kante, out of... A lot of amazing performances. He takes the man of the match for me. 100% aerials won. 100% crosses completed. 100 touches. 96% pass accuracy. Walked all over that. Well, I'm not going to say walk. That man was everywhere. He was everywhere. All throughout the pitch. Even going forward. Starting attacks. And him linking up well with Kai Havertz and Mason Mount was very, is the perfect midfield for us. I'm going to give him a 9. Mason Mount as well. Back in the middle of midfield. Field. He kept all of his haters quiet today and I already said Mason Mount is not a bad player Mason Mount was overplayed and played in the wrong position He needs to be played in that center of midfield and he played it perfectly He had the most chances and tackles made all match 91% pass accuracy as well He looked back at home in his proper position eight for him uh, Kai Havertz as well, he's going to get an 8. I think he showed how versatile he is and he also showed what he could offer defensively. A very underrated part of his game, so he's getting an 8 too. Another 8's popping round, it's going to Hakim Ziyech. Would have gone man of the match, but N'Golo Kante's performance was just excellent. Uh, he, he made the attack click all game, he had an insane vision and it was a great hit for the first goal because we needed some magic to break the deadlock. And who stepped up? Hakim Ziyech. Timo Werner. Frustrated with the lack of service because he did have a couple runs being made, but again, that Burnley defence is hard to find any space in there. But I think he did very well coming back to join up with the link up play, and it helped us to dominate the midfield. And he got a goal as well at the end, so I'm going to give him a seven. Tammy Abraham as well, he battled hard against the defence, but it was a bit of a losing battle for him. But he had a good assist for the first goal, and he was very involved in the link up play just as much as Timo Werner was, so he's going to get a seven as well. Giroud, unlucky that that first goal was offside. Other than that, didn't really see too much. Six for him. Kalamaz Zadoy, tell me if I missed anything as well. I might have been trying to switch streams, but I'm going to give him a six too. Jorginho slowed down the play a little bit more when he came on, but that's usually what he's been best for, especially since Project Restart when Billy Gilmore was, was more around. That's the role that we had for Jorginho. So, yeah, good performance from him. I'll give him a seven. But, guys, this is the end of player ratings for Burnley nil, Chelsea 3. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G as well. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the Chelsea. We are back.